Epiphan Pearl is a surprisingly powerful video switcher, recording and streaming engine. It is basically an all-in-one experience, except as usual, it is really convenient to add a remote panel for it to map out specific functions. And hey, that's what Skahoy do best. And of course, we have added a Perl 2 integration to our Blue Pill platform. So in this video, I'll show you how to quickly map recording and streaming toggles, as well as a full cut row for video switching onto the sleek and beautiful QuickPad. First, we'll direct our attention to the web UI of Blue Pill. We call this React. This is where we are mapping functions from devices onto panels. And you see, I already added the Epiphan Pearl device over here in the device list. You basically, when you do that, click this button, you will search and discover devices on the network, or you can add them manually from our super long and extensive list of like 400 devices you can add. It is basic in that you select a given model. In this case, we have only the Perl Tour model and you type in the IP address, maybe a username if that's applicable and a device password. Anyway, that has been set up. We are connected, all is good. And over here on the left side, you find the panels that we have. Now, I told you that the Blue Pill platform is where we integrate the Pearl. And we have a legacy platform called Unisketch. And the beauty is that with this new platform, we can do so many more device integrations while all the panels from our legacy platform going years back, like the QuickPad, one of the last devices that you need to run on that platform is uh, possible to integrate with the Blue Pill. So today, this is the brain and this one is basically a guest on this one. So it's it's connected as a client to our blue pill in uh, in this case. Now, I just want to highlight that the quick pad is also coming in a blue pill version at some point. I don't know about the price tag. As long as you have blue pill in your network, it's perfectly fine running it like this. But that's the brain and this one is following along. Anyway, Let's look at it in here. So the quick pad is already connected to our blue pill. It has an IP address. It is found down here. It has a serial number. It's all set up. It's green light go all over the place. Now, the first thing I want to do is to change away from the default configuration that was made. So basically I want to just reset it. And now you see it's completely blanked out. There's nothing in this place. Uh, by the way, I can test my connection to it by clicking this button if I want to. Now let's just quickly create a custom configuration because I want to get mapping those streaming functions I talked about. So having made a custom configuration, I can now go to my configuration tab and I'm basically able now to select my QuickPad configuration. And now we see the QuickPad in the UI, right? And I will simply click this button. And then you see over here a number of actions. We call them behaviors that you can assign to this button. It could be recording, it could be streaming, and it could also be choosing the source for your layout in the Perl. Now, maybe you want a little bit of context for how does the Perl work. It currently has uh, two HDMI inputs with some video sources that I'm feeding it, but it can take uh, four HDMIs and it has some uh, SDI and it has audio and all kinds of things. You can read the specs online. This is not my job to tell you about that. But basically, this device, being powerful as it is, has uh, what is called channels. And that's like a mix effect row. So for each of these channels, you can select which source goes out on it or which window composition you want. And then all the inputs are inputs as you're used to. So if we uh, go in here and if we look at what is called layouts, the layouts are the different compositions that you can select to the output on the channel. Now, uh, we are working on the program channel here and uh, I wanna bring the attention to uh, the section here with streaming and recording. First of all, streaming, you can actually set up multiple streams so you can stream it in that direction and to that uh, output and so on. You set that up here and that is one of the things we'll be enabling from the quick pad. The same with recordings, you see a number of recordings that has been made, they are all here and our recordings today will be added to this list. Now, if we go into background, you can see similar things that there could be streams. Currently, nothing seems to be set up for the background channel. And the same with recordings. There are also some recordings historically associated with that. Okay, let's go back to program. So for all those, we can actually um, manage every single one of these. But, um, and I wanna show you the Epifan Live because inside this live view, I can now uh, basically monitor things on this one. For instance, I could monitor the output of program. So actually, I think I want it down here because then this could be like my monitor for the output. And then up here, I want to show what is coming in on my video input 
number. Let me see number video input number one. Okay, so that's that's one of the channels and video input number two. Let's make a little video switcher on the quick pad. So we have these two inputs. And if we look at the layouts that are available on our program channel, we have a background, single A, B, box A, B, etc. And um, if you're a Perl user, you know how to edit and add new layouts and so on. The single A and single B is actually showing my HDMI inputs one and two. So those are great. That's basically if you know, these inputs that I'm seeing here is my uh, A and B. And by the way, if I go in here and I choose the switch application, let's just switch over to that one. Yeah, this is actually why you see it. So you see single A, single B, if I pick single B up there and I switch that over, this is what I get over here. So that's exactly what I want to do. Now, let's go over to the blue pill configuration and then across this row of buttons, I would basically make that a cutting row and choose layout and I want to set the channel to one, which is great. And now I want to set the layout to be individual layout sources. We start with zero, which is the background. That would basically be this guy. So I could also have that included. But other than that, sorry, I want basically these to go from zero up to like five and then see what happens. Now, this is done super cool by the badge editor. So I'll just enter in here and then I'll just, uh, let me see. I'll just auto increment all these fields save this and now immediately you see it says background single a single b box a box b two box and we have that on the quick pad as well okay so that's great let's go to the switcher and then see what happens if i choose background i get background on the output if i choose single a okay great single b great what about box a box b it seems to work so that's just super cool and so easy to do. Now, uh, maybe you want these to be red because if it is like uh, in highlighted mode, then it would be very nice if this button was lighting up in red, for instance. So if you go advanced, you can go in here and then you can basically see that um, we have these sort of conditional outputs here. And uh, this one light up if set is actually the one that will make this light up if that is an output. So now we could select a red color for that one. And we'll see now it turns red. If I go to the one just next to, it is white and I would have to set the same for that as well. Now we are really starting to configure and it is so easy. Although if you go into show more, you may be distracted by a whole lot of options, but I just wanna tell you that in here, you will typically under conditional feedback, find something that explains light up if set. All right, so when it's set, I want it to light up and I also want it to use red color and now it uses the red color as you just see here. So you can go and customize all that stuff. Now, that was using it as a video switcher. Now I want to start and stop streaming. And for the buttons up here, we can now uh, pick one of these and then I have something called record all channels start. That sounds very ambitious. So with that, apparently I can record all channels by just pressing a single button. Let's start with one channel. So for the program channel, I can now start recording and I think I'm done. I could probably also do streaming. Let's just check that. Uh, streaming channel, okay. And uh, the channel I'm streaming is number one. Unfortunately, the channels are um, um, numerated by just one, two, three, four, but they are, if I change it here, you'll see it's actually changing in the display. So you see it up there that it's now the background, but the background channel. Uh, but I'll just put that back to one. So we work on the program channel. Uh, it's also possible to have a streaming time code. You can have recording time code. And um, those functions are just there to like give you um, a timing on how far are we on these um, things. It also cannot be changed. This is why you see that little icon in the corner. Okay, let's press the button and then see what happens. It has been recording for some time. You can see that there's this time code going on. And if we go into the UI of the panel. If I go to streaming, you'll see that I am actually streaming here on this channel. I could stop it. If I stop it, hey, we see it stops on the panel as well. If I start it on the panel, then what happens in here? It is now starting. If I'm stopping on the panel, it is also stopping in the UI. Great. What about recording? It is uh, currently recording. And uh, that's what we are seeing here. Actually, there is a nice little function. And that is really cool on everyone's side as well. And I think I want to sacrifice some of my time code. So I can just drag across these, delete my behaviors. Because if I click here and I go into recording, I have this reset recording function. If I press that, it will basically 
end the recording as it is right now and start a new one. So it just gives me like, a, it, it's great way to break up files, for instance. And it does so again for the programming channel here. So let's just see what happens in the UI. If I do that now, I will just, it has been recording for about one minute and 20 seconds. Let's just refresh the UI, two minutes, okay. So I press program to break this up and this, I now reload, you can see it's basically starting a new recording here and it will probably tell me in a bit that it has been recording for a few seconds. There we go, 10 seconds. So it's updating like every 10 seconds and so. Okay, so you see continuous recording, pressing that button to reset the recording and it will start over, continue in another file and the, the first file and so on. Very, very useful function, I would really say. Now, there was this super cool thing as well that we can actually, for a button like this one, select all channels start recording or, str or stop but we can also toggle and it's the toggle that we are for. So right now we will actually start recording on multiple channels if we are pressing this one. It is not saying anything but off even though I am recording because I am not recording on all channels. But if I press it, it will now start recording on all channels and the moment I press it again, it will also stop recording on the program channel. There you go. Actually, I didn't press it. It might have looked like it, I did, but it did stop by itself. Okay, start all. Interesting, let's just go check. So in the program channel, am I recording? Yes, I have been recording for two seconds. What about the background channel? Am I recording? Apparently for zero seconds or 10 seconds. Okay, so it seems like there's a pattern here. I am in fact recording in all these channels. That is great. And that was a function that you found inside this uh, UI. And by the way, you can make multiple pages, which is sort of useful right now. So it is very likely that you want to have like a second page and uh, you could do that. So now on page number two of this UI, uh, and, and then I could assign, I could take an encoder here and uh, in the navigation, I could use that to cycle pages. So um, on my encoder here, I'm basically, I now created a little um, function that will throw me into page two where I then need to clear out that behavior. So it, it has my, my paging. So I can go forth and back between two pages of functionality. And on that second page, I could now do all the kind of cool things that we had available in here. But there is not much more I can show you. We have taken those things, those, those things that I promised you would be useful with a remote panel like this, broken them out from the Perl because it's not the settings in the web UI, all those things that you do in here, typically like setting up things, typing in values and so on. You want to do that in a web UI, but you want to start and stop and monitor your streaming from a remote, remote panel like this, not even from this one, because it has wires coming out of the backside. Even though it's a beautiful device, you still want to hide it away. But this one, this can be in your conference room table. This is very easy to hand over to an operator and only limit it to the simple functions that you want them to control. So that's the story of Skahoy. This is how we operate. This is how we want it to work. And the reason why I brought in the Airfly Pro, which is one of our like top end controllers, is to tell you this can equally well be used on this one. You can either, I mean, it's probably it has so many buttons that it will be difficult to fill it with functions from the Perl itself. But remember that inside of Reactor, we have the, uh, the ability to mix and match. So you can add other devices. It can be cameras, it can be video routers, it can be combining the Perl with a different video switcher. So for larger surfaces from Skaho, you can absolutely mix it together in here. And just like you saw me do, you can assign functions down to any of these buttons and mix it up with functions of other devices as well. That's how our system is constructed. This is how the Blue Pill platform works. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on social media or do both. And uh, you can subscribe to newsletters as well. We are always interested in knowing your opinions, so you're also welcome to leave them in the comment section below. Or you can write it to sales at skyhoy.com or to support at skyhoy.com if you have questions about our Epifan Pearl integration.